Hello everybody, now we're going to take a look at stat powers and the custom discrete distribution calculator. There's a lot of neat features here and so I'm going to try to go through all of them to show you how you can use it in its various different ways. So first off, when you come to this screen you are presented with a blank distribution. Um, you can start by adding the values or first let's let's set the number of values let's let's make a distribution that um, describes some random phenomenon it can take values from zero to six or let's say from one to six so i'm going to uh, notice i click put in the number one and then i clicked on auto increment it, it is smart enough to look at that number and say, okay, all the numbers after it are going to be just incremented one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's, that's handy, uh, the auto increment feature. The second, um, now I'm going to go through and put in the improbabilities. And I'm going to just type them in one by one. Let's say start 0 0.35, 0 0.20, 0 0.15. And let's just suppose I don't know the probability of a four, but I know the probability of a five is 0.10, probability of six is 0.05. Now notice it's already giving me a couple little errors and it's and it's highlighting these cells in red indicating that something isn't right with the probability. It says each probability has to be from 0 to 1. Oh look at that um, when I, I clicked out of it. Um, but it was telling me that I can't, um, it, it only added up to 0 0.8 but, or 0 0.85 I think. And then it, when I clicked out of it it said oh okay well the missing value must be 0.15. So it has this ability to uh, to fill in the missing value if you are missing it. Now, okay, so we've got our distribution. We have cumulative probability uh, given in the last column. That's calculated as soon as this is a valid distribution. And um, down below you can see it's giving me the expected value of this distribution, the variance and the standard deviation, and now it says probability 0.15 because there are five ways of asking for probability. I've already selected the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. So this, that's what this is telling me. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 is 0 0.15. Um, let's, let's click this and look at the probability chart, which is a um, probability mass function. And I can, um, I'm going to see you can see how the I have these uh, bars. Uh, let's say if I wanted to find the probability that I'm that the value is from three to five inclusive. So you can the the third option is between two values between three and five. Um, it's highlighting those in green, and also I've got the probability down below is 0.4. I can choose checked values, which is if I just want to select. A few of these one by one, I can select those and I'll get the sum of those probabilities down below. So that's really handy. Okay, now let's let's take a look at, um, uh, I'm going to re refresh this and start over with a different way of adding, uh, a different way of doing uh, this. I'm going to look at um, binned data. Okay, so let's say my, and I'm gonna actually go to enter frequencies instead of enter probabilities. So let's say I've collected some frequency data and let's, let's start with, now these, I wanna actually, let's, I'm gonna, I wanna clear this stuff out. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna just say there's one and then I'm gonna change it to um, uh, five different values and the first value two to four. Oops, I want to use bins. Let's click on use bins and I'll say I'm going to have five values and the first bin is the values from two to four. Um, and I'm going to click on auto increment. So you can see what happened now with the bins, it's smart enough to say, okay, the first bin is from two to four, the next one will be from five to seven. It makes sure each of the bins has the same uh, width. Uh, you don't. You can manually enter the bins as long as they're in the right format. They have to be from one integer to another integer. Uh, but anyway, now I'm going to just enter frequencies. Let's say there was 30 observations of the first from values from 2 to 4. I have 49 from 5 to 7. 
I've got 25 in the next bin, 12 in the next bin, 8 in the next bin. So I had 124 observations, it tells me right there. It calculates relative frequencies for me, and it calculates a cumulative relative frequency. Um, the probability chart is labeled with the bins, and I can uh, calculate probability only by checking on bins. So you can see um, it's going to calculate probability for me, and it's going to highlight the bins. Okay, that's fine. Now this this third tab is called Enter Data. Now, and Enter Data is going to take the frequency data that you have, and uh, it's going to present it as uh, just a list of data. Okay, so you, each of these, the, the bin 2 to 4 shows up that many times, 8 to 10 shows up that many times, and so forth and so forth. Um, you can actually go back and forth between enter frequency and enter data. And actually you can go back to enter probabilities as well. And it's going to have the bins there the same way um, the probabilities are going to be there, but it's not going to have the frequencies anymore. That information is lost to a certain extent, but if you don't change anything and go back, enter frequencies, it's going to have all the frequencies for you, um, and it, it's able to keep that information. But if you start, if you go to enter probabilities and start changing the probabilities around, it's going to try to come up with the right number of frequency, but it may get it wrong. Um, it, it can only do the best it can do. Now, um, I'm going to start over from entering data and show you kind of that way of, of making an empirical distribution. Uh, so let's clear this. Okay, and I'm going to go to enter data. We have a blank data table and I'm going to just uh, copy in a, a set of data. Okay, I've got some discrete data. Okay, so you come here. Um, I'm going to paste in some discrete data that I copied from the book. Okay. So I have this data separated on different lines. There's semicolons, but this is okay. It's flexible enough to understand uh, understand all this. Um, I'm going to just click on Refresh Table. You could also just click back to the Enter Frequencies tab, but I'm going to click here uh, after you entered your data, and it's going to go to the frequencies, and it shows you that there were 11 ones, there were 10 twos, 16 threes, and so forth. The data is still over here. Enter Data, it's still in there but it's been cleaned up quite a bit. Okay, so that's how you can make an empirical distribution and my probability chart reflects this distribution uh, and I can calculate probabilities just as I was doing before and I got, um, I will get the, let's say, I think I have to click recalculate to get my expected value variance and standard deviation, but I get all that can calculate probabilities. So this is how you use a discrete distribution calculator, the custom discrete distribution calculator.